Hello, I'm Ed Palacios, and I'm here today talking with Kevin Foster. He is considered one of the leading authorities on the history of the Fort Worth Police Department. And one of my objectives in my research is to, is to dispel the myths and the stereotypes of the Fort Worth Police Department. You know, uh, there are a lot of uh, stereotypes of, of Texas and especially Fort Worth. Uh, you know, everything was the Wild West back in the 19th century and that uh, gunslingers were walking the streets and there were showdowns on high noon. Um, you know, and, and a lot of this comes from uh, dime store novels from the, from the Times. A lot of it comes from Hollywood. Uh, most recently, in an episode of uh, a television show, 1883, you know, there's a depiction of Jim Cartwright, or Courtright, excuse me, uh, who was the city marshal of Fort Worth from 1876 to 1879. And uh, Jim Courtright, uh, he had a reputation as uh, a gunslinger and uh, maybe very well founded. But as is often the case in uh, those kinds of reputations, there was probably more embellishment to it than truth. But the idea was that his reputation would help him gain authority amongst the, uh, the drunken cowboys and, and uh, criminals of Fort Worth, uh, especially in what's called um, Hell's Acre in uh, the, uh, the, the stockyards of Fort Worth. And so my intent is to really dispel those myths and talk about how the Fort Worth Department, uh, even back at, at its beginning in 1873, um, was really attempting to develop a modern police department, um, at least modern for its day. And as with anything, there's a, there was growth and evolution in what was acceptable police work, uh, what was acceptable uh, from a social and legal standpoint. And uh, I'd like to talk to Kevin, who is the author of two books, uh, Written in Blood, Volume 1, and Written in Blood, Volume 2. And uh, these two books are all about the history of the Fort Worth Police Department, and they emphasize the, um, the officers that gave their lives for the protection of the citizens of Fort Worth. Uh, so Kevin, thank you so much for, um, for participating in this project. And I'd like to ask you, can you, can you please tell us um, about the beginnings of the Fort Worth Police Department and um, how did they try to organize a modern police organization? The police department started in April of 1873 with the hiring of a marshal and four police officers. The city hadn't put a lot of thought into this and they didn't have a means to pay the, to pay the officers. So they laid those officers off and they started looking to other cities to find out how they were paid. And they came up with the fees and fines. So although Fort Worth encouraged, the city government encouraged the cowboys to come to town and to spend their money and to gamble, they also didn't want them to be too rowdy. So the, when uh, the police would encounter these people, they would go ahead and arrest them, take them to jail, and fine them, usually a dollar or two dollars, and uh, let them go when they sobered up, and then the officers would get a, a portion of that money. It was called the fees and fines system, and it went on for about 20 years or so, but as they, as they moved closer to the late 1870s, the officers started drawing a regular salary. Elections were held every two years. New chiefs of police that actually really wanted the job and wanted to be in the town uh, started working for the department. They were uh, making people, they were electing them as city marshals, and the city council would appoint them as the chief of police. And these city marshals began bounty hunting, which was fully acceptable by the city and the, to help pay for the officers. It moved on in that direction until uh, Sam Farmer became the city marshal. And Sam uh, did, did a number of things, but amongst the things he did in 1889 was to write the first set of rules and regulations for the behavior of officers along with suggestions on how to police more appropriately 
what to look for and how to conduct themselves in their personal life and in their private life. And from that point into the 1890s, again with elections being held, the, uh, the police department went to a regular badge that where everyone wore the same badge in 1891. That was brought about by Jim Maddox. He was also brought about a change in 1905 and with another new badge so that people would all look the same. The uniforms had been standardized. The uh, Sam Farmer was a Union soldier and he had all the officers in blue and the other uh, chiefs were all uh, from the Confederacy and they wanted their guys in gray. So the uniforms switched back and forth a few times and uh, by the mid-1890s it was a standardized uh, blue uniform with standardized badges and uh, every so often, probably every 10 years or so, the rules and regulations were rewritten. The city council would come up with more guidelines that they wanted. And uh, I believe in 1905, still seeking to have a better police department, they went to a, a commissioner system and there was a, an elected commissioner of fire and police. And that commissioner would find the best chief that he knew of and would bring them into the department and would have that chief guide the department for the next two years and until the next election and if, if that person lost the election another chief would come in with the new commissioner and they did that continuously up till 1925 and putting together the best department they could again changing the rules and regulations and enhancing them and lengthening them as they went along very good uh kevin what are some of the controversies regarding the Fort Worth Police Department and its history. The uh, the police the police department under one of the police commissioners, uh, a man named Mordecai Hurlston, uh, made uh, some great advances in policing and techniques and dispatch systems. But he also hired a bunch of men that had been fired from the department in the past for uh, unnecessary violence. And he put these men to work, and I think it was the first three months, three of them were killed. And uh, part of that was the way they approached situations, their own tempers, etc. The, com the commissioner himself was replaced, and a lot of his reforms were undone, and a new chief came in. Now that uh, that was one of the things. In uh, one of the the man who replaced that commissioner in 1916 directed a uh, lieutenant in the department, a man named George Choler, to go ahead and create a chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. And so the Ku Klux Klan was put together and founded its own chapter in Fort Worth on October 31st, 1916. And the mayor and the police commissioner led a parade in downtown Fort Worth of all the Klansmen in full regalia, including their horses. The uh, that. Uh, went away fairly rapidly by about the 1920s. Uh, interestingly, the sheriff's department and county officials wanted nothing to do with the Klan, and that was all Fort Worth city officials and the police department. By 1925, I think they were all gone uh, from the Klan. The Klan folded in Fort Worth, I believe, 1928, mm -hmm. and the uh, life went on uh, more regularly. The uniforms continued to evolve, the systems evolved, they, they got cars and motorcycles and more equipment and they actually started training officers in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. And that training um, actually involved sending one man to the New York, City, New York uh, City Police Department Academy so that they could learn from New York as to what they did. And he brought those lessons back to Fort Worth. Fort Worth also uh, became known for its uh, detectives and their identification bureau, and that was nationally known. So those were the, how they moved it forward. Uh, Kevin, did you, you mentioned that uh, there were actually women in the Fort Worth Police Department in limited roles as early as the, ninth, the early 20th century, is that correct? Yes. Uh, 
The YWCA funded the Traveler's Aid Society and the Traveler's Aid Society worked out of the train stations. The police department commissioned women as special police officers to, to carry a badge and carry a gun and to be a safe haven for women traveling by themselves at these train stations. They would often find babies that had been abandoned there, um, things you don't hear about as much now. They would adopt the babies out with very few records going with them. They uh, looked in and uh, on child welfare cases. They assisted officers in any number of things. And they hired their first full-time police jail matron and gave her a commission as a special officer. That was a Miss Ollie Hargrave. And she served in that role until 1915. So, And you have also found evidence of African-American officers uh, hired under special circumstances as well. Yes, the uh, there was in the original officers a man named Hag, Hagar Tucker was hired and he only lasted a few months the city refused to pay him and he was a an upstanding citizen and he lived with his family and he left the department never to return but in 1895 Fort Worth established the first restricted park for African Americans and uh, it was put together in time for Emancipation Day, which is now called Juneteenth. Now, up until that time, Fort Worth citizens had to go to Dallas to celebrate Juneteenth. But with the creation of Douglas Park, they were able to do it here in Fort Worth. And that park was just off of North Main Street at the north end of the Paddock Viaduct. They uh, had baseball fields, Masonic lodges, uh, homes, swimming holes, uh, they had a band uh, bandstand, they had live music, and knowing that this was going on, the city allowed the organizers to have a police officer down there that was also African American, and the first one was named Dick Burns, and he became a very popular officer with the department and with the newspapers, and did a, uh, a fantastic job down there. He was replaced after a few years by with another man, and uh, every few years there would be new new people going in. And then uh, by the er by the early 20th century, there was a man named Hiram McGar who was a businessman downtown, an African American, and he was he owned his own black baseball team called McGar's Wonders. He also started his own he had his own baseball stadium. It was between Northwest Fifth and Northwest Sixth Street near downtown and he would hire a number of black men to come in and be police officers at that park and they were all commissioned by the city to do so so uh, that continued on at least until 1921 or 22 when they moved away from having special officers thank you now kevin as a retired sergeant of the fort worth police department you know how does today's fort worth police department maintain its professionalism and how, how does it measure against other big city American police departments? I, I think the way they, they maintain the standards now is by use of body cameras, by use of uh, car cameras, by having a very robust internal affairs section and a special investigations division that focuses on police misconduct and police crime. They, the chief of police acts swiftly as opposed to times past to yet yet they act swiftly to take officers out of the department that don't need to be there and to instill that professionalism in the department it uh, was often said during my career that it was about one percent one to five percent of the police department caused ninety percent of the internal investigations and now they can look at that they understand that and if you have those officers causing those investigations they uh, seem to find their way out the door much more rapidly than they ever have they uh, do that and they are also now uh, in this time they're incredibly open with the releasing of information when they can as well as videos and uh, with uh, access to the chief and through the uh, uh, police monitor. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. I, I truly appreciate your help in this project. And uh, 
again, I hope that uh, my continued research will go will will continue to dispel the myths of the wild wild west in Fort Worth, and uh, especially among the uh, the Fort Worth Police Department as they strive to continue to raise a raise the the bar on professionalism in uh, law enforcement in Texas. Thank you. Thank you.